Hi everybody, it's Paul here from Ad Espresso. Thanks for joining us today. Um, just before we get going, we just want to make sure that you can hear me okay and see my screen. So if you can just pop a little message in the chat box there. Also let us know where you're logging in from as well there. Hi Melissa, thanks for thanks for joining us today. We've got quite a few people today as well. Yeah, Melissa's from New Hampshire. We've got Rich, Jason, Jory, Shannon, Matt, Ashley, Troy. Wow, we've got so many people today. This looks like one of the biggest audiences for our webinars. So thank you all for joining us. It's really appreciated. We've got people from all over the world by the looks of it. Um, so what we're going to do here, um, just a bit of housekeeping before we get going. Um, the most common question we always get asked, yes, we are recording. Um, so if you don't manage to watch the whole of the webinar today, um, we're going to post it onto our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash Ad Espresso. Um, it's also on our Facebook page, which is facebook.com Ad Espresso. Also, if you're an Ad Espresso customer, it will be in the university tab of Ad Espresso as well. We're trying to distribute it to as many channels as possible. Um, we're going to take Q&A as we go along. My colleague Tori is in the um, is, is looking at the questions now. So any questions, just pop it in there. We'll try and get to those um, either at the end or as we go along, if there's time there. Um, also got some bonuses for you. So you'll see on GoToWebinar, there's a little handout section. And we've got three handouts there, which I explain as we go along. So you might want to go grab those and download those. And for um, people that are new to Ad Espresso, I've got a little special offer at the end of the webinar to thank you for watching. Um, so a little intro about me, um, you can see me here, this is where I'm usually drinking espresso because we're working with Ad Espresso all day and hang out with the cats in the office there. Um, I work with five cats and they're usually jumping onto a lot of coaching calls. Um, so I'm a Facebook ad specialist, basically a Facebook geek or Facebook nerd. So I work for Ad Espresso and our parent company Hootsuite. Um, before I worked for Ad Espresso, I've got a background in social media management. I personally handle probably about one and a half million dollars a year on Facebook. You know, after the first million, you kind of stop counting, but I'm working with um, Facebook ads all the time, which I think is really important. This is based on practice, not just theory. And we provide coaching for clients. You know, I work with clients that maybe just spend $10, $20 a day, up to some with revenues of well over 10 billion. So I get to work with ads a lot. So I'm gonna pass on some of my tips today. Um, before we get digging into the real fun things of retargeting, just a little proviso here, like a little assumption. I'm assuming that you've got your Facebook pixels already set up on your website. Now, if you look at this and you're thinking, help, I haven't got them set up, um, you might wanna be looking at the Facebook Blueprint course. So Facebook Blueprint is the free and official course provided by Facebook. You can read about pixels on there and it's probably something we'll run a webinar on another time. But to retarget, we really need our pixel set up. There are some audiences we can create without pixels, some engagement audiences, which we'll come to later. Um, but to get maximum benefit, to, you really want to be getting your pixels there. Um, and we'll just put in a little shameless plug before we get started as well. Um, if you do want help setting up your pixels, if you've got a WordPress site or WooCommerce, we've got a free plugin for WordPress called Pixel Caffeine. It's completely free. We never charge for this. So I hope you don't mind me promoting it there. But yeah, there's the, just download it. You can plug it in. We're never going to be charging for this. So have a look at Pixel Caffeine if you've got a WordPress site. Um, I've checked it out. It's very, very easy to set up your pixels. You basically put in your pixel ID, link it to your Facebook page, and away you go. It populates all the pixels that you need for your WordPress site, and it sets up a uh, WooCommerce product catalog for dynamic product ads, if that applies. So what are we going to be doing today on this webinar? And um, we're going to be looking at some Facebook uh, retargeting strategies that you should really be um, thinking about applying to really scale up your business. So we're going to break this down into seven topics. I mean, there's so much we could cover, but I'm going to be looking at some of the big hitting things here. So evergreen retargeting is what we get asked about all the time. So we're going to be looking at how to set up your first evergreen retargeting campaign. We're then going to go a little bit deeper and look at how to separate your audiences out. And from there, we can then also look at how to sequence some ads. Again, that's something we get asked about all the time. Now, once you've gone beyond the evergreen retargeting, this is generally for the first few days or the first few weeks that people engage with you. Once they drop out of that, we might move on to seasonal retargeting. So we're gonna be looking at how to plan those campaigns. And then we're gonna take a deep dive into email custom audiences, which are probably gonna be the most valuable audiences that you've got. 
and also look at what the kind of offers that you can be using for retargeting and finally wrap it all up with the optimization bidding and placements that you can be using there so um, before we dive into evergreen retargeting first of all why do we need to retarget um, this is a screenshot here from the um, funnel of an actual client there and we can see this is quite typical they've um, shown 100,000 impressions to people of those that's generated just under 6,000 clicks. Then people have gone through from the landing page um, to nearly 3,000 product pages. And then there's 538 add to carts. And then we go to the initiate checkout, which is the actual checkout page, but they haven't entered their payment details yet. And of those, 53 purchases. So we start with 100,000 and over the over the course of the funnel, it gets down to 53 purchases. So at each stage there, there's a lot of chance to get some extra revenue from people and really just push them over the line and get them to purchase there. Um, something that's often overlooked as well with retargeting is we've got to think about where our, our clients, our users are seeing our ads. So Facebook said recently in their um, quarterly earnings report, that 91% of Facebook ad revenue now comes from mobile. So this picture here, this is typical of where um, Facebook users are seeing your ads. They're in the queue at the coffee shop, like these two people at the end here, they're, they're on their mobile. They see your ad, they really like it, they click on it, but they just don't have time to buy. They just don't have time to complete the purchase because their large frappuccino or their pumpkin spice latte is ready and then they've got to jump on a bus or a train or whatever um so they're really interested but of course you know that they just forget to come back to your site um they're gonna see loads and loads of other ads during the day they're getting bombarded with email so we need to basically kind of wave a flag and go hey remember us make sure you come back and that's why retargeting can work extremely well so we're going to dive in and we're going to be looking at how to set up um, some easy evergreen retargeting campaigns. Now, of course, one thing we get asked a lot is, well, what defines an evergreen campaign? And really the key thing with a evergreen campaign is that it dynamically updates over time. This is what set it, sets it apart from standard retargeting. So it eliminates the problem of a static audience where performance generally declines over time because the same people are seeing the ads uh, day in, day out, and you just get a high frequency for the ads and ad fatigue. Um, to give you an example, I've seen it myself where I um, saw a really nice bag on a website, I wanted to buy it. Um, I then actually went and bought it from, uh, I think it was like somewhere on eBay. Um, but because I'd seen it on the website um, from the brand, they would then show me ads every day for 180 days, which is how long the pixel clicks that audience for. So every day for six months, I saw the same ad and they just waste their ad spend. You know, you're either going to click on it and you're going to buy it or you're just not interested. And then people could actually, um, users could hide your ad that could reduce your relevancy score that could affect your cost per click so we really don't want to be just blasting out the standard ads to a big audience all the time we really want to be using evergreen retargeting um, and if you set them up right and get the audiences dialed in right you can be running these for months or even years I've got some I've been running now for a year and um, you know so that you don't have to be working day by day on your ad account there and generally they can give a really good ROI so just to illustrate this with a little bit of kind of clip out here, um, think of your audience like on a conveyor belt. They join here on the right hand side on day one. They then see your ads for however many days, um, like four or seven days, and then they drop off the end. But of course, this audience is constantly refreshing there. So it doesn't matter that people are, are dropping out of the funnel there. Now, in terms of some of the audiences that we can use, if you haven't looked recently, Facebook have really vastly increased the number of audiences that we can be targeting. Um, so there's actually five categories now and 55 different audience types. So lots of potential there to create some audiences for our evergreen campaigns. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna play a little video here talking you through how we can create these. So if you go into Ads Manager, click the hamburger icon, and they expand that out and under assets you can get to audiences um, so we're just going to load up the audience page that always takes a few seconds to load and we get the blue button there so if you click on that you can then create your audiences and we're going to be using a custom audience rather than anything else so we get the screen we're saying there's five categories so we've got customer files where you can upload an email list and we'll be covering that in a bit more detail soon um, you can create what's called a WCA or website custom audience. 
And, and again, we'll be going a bit more detail on that a little bit later. Um, if you've got mobile apps and they're connected through to Facebook by the SDK, you can create audiences based off that. Um, you can now use offline product catalogs as well. And then quite new, there's engagement audiences. So you can create an audience of people that watched a video um, that are filled in a lead form. Full screen experience is a canvas type post. Um, Facebook page, if you change your Instagram to a business profile, you can create an audience based around that. And then you can also, um, still quite new, you can create audiences based off people that have um, said that they're going to one of your events. There's something brand new on there as well, where if you've, if you've got Eventbrite connected up and people have bought tickets on there, you can even retarget them. So lots of opportunity now to retarget people on Facebook. So if you want more detail on those audiences, um, just go to the handout section of GoToWebinar there, and you'll see that you can download our Facebook custom audiences guide. We released this last year at the end of last year. I checked it just before uh, this webinar. It's still really up to date. If you're watching this webinar after broadcast, then just go to adespresso.com ebooks and you can get the free guide there. I think it's about 50 pages and we cover all those audiences in depth. So what we're looking for there really is that we want our audience to be dynamic. And so the audiences that we could use for that are things like a website custom audience, um, app interaction, those engagement audiences that we touched on briefly. Um, what you do when you create those is you put in a time window. So what happens is they're gonna refresh. That you, For example, if you're using a seven day audience, you don't need to go and update it every seven days. This is gonna be manual there. So, um, so it's gonna be dynamic there. So that's the real beauty of using these. We don't have to keep creating new audiences. Now, there are some audiences that are static and one of those is email audiences. Um, but later on in the webinar, I think it's about section five, I'm gonna give you some tips on how we can make them dynamic because we wanna automate absolutely as much as possible there. So um, let's just look at how we can create a really simple website custom audience. So again, in the audience panel there, we click the blue button, click custom audience. And then if we click website traffic there, then we'll see we can create an audience of all website visitors. And it's as simple as putting in our day there. So we can say, right, I want an audience of people that have visited in the last seven days. Just make sure you're really clear with the name because you're probably going to be creating lots of audiences. And there we go, it's done. Um, so we can now use that audience in some of our ads. And I timed that process, it's under 30 seconds to create. So some people seem to get really confused by evergreen retargeting and think it's a really complex process, but within under 30 seconds, you can create an audience to use there. And then we'll just see how we implement that. So what you would do if you're using Business Manager to create your ads is that we put in our inclusion audience. So we just pick that audience of people that visited in the last seven days. And of course, we might wanna be thinking about exclusions. So there's nothing worse than retargeting to people that have already taken the action. So you might wanna be creating an audience of say purchasers, and you could be excluding those. Um, another case, if you're not doing e-commerce, maybe you're doing lead gen, um, you'd be excluding your current leads so that you can then retarget people that have visited the website but haven't gone and signed up um, to your lead magnet there. So we're just excluding the right audiences. And we're gonna cover how to create some of these pixel audiences and of course, email custom audiences a little bit later in this presentation. Um, so if you create these audiences, what you've got to remember is that these audiences are going to dynamically update and they're completely free to create. So it's good ahead of time to create ones for lots of different time windows. I regularly have ones from, say, days one to 14 all mapped out. And then when I'm creating some new campaigns, I don't have to stop and think, hang on, I need to go and create these extra audiences. Um, so create loads and loads of audiences. And then we need a way of keeping track of those. So within your asset library within Facebook, then you're gonna have the folders there with all the audiences listed out. Or a little tip there, if you use Ad Espresso, we have under the tool section, the asset manager, and then you can create different folders and you can drag and drop the audiences into different folders. So we can see here, like my name, we've got Paul, toys on this webinar. If we're creating different audiences, we can put them into our own folders. Um, and it just makes it really clear when we're dealing sometimes with tens or hundreds of audiences, exactly where they are there. So yeah, a little bonus tip if you're using Ad Espresso. So as you can see, really simple process. You can create your custom audience of website visitors or similar. 
we then exclude people that have taken the next action and we just put that in a campaign and there we go that's going to be your first evergreen audience so if you haven't used them before very very simple just dive in create one i think you'll find the process really easy um, next what we can go on to is evergreen retargeting where we can separate the audiences out so what i mean by that is we might be looking at say website visitors we could show them a little basic offer Maybe people that have gone a bit further down the funnel, we can give them a higher offer if they've like added to cart. If they've gone through to that last step of initiate checkout, we might give them a bigger offer. And remember, the further they are down the funnel, they could be smaller audiences, but we might go and retarget them for a little bit longer there. So how do we set these up? Very, very simple. Is what we can do there is we can create an audience of all website visitors, maybe for the last seven days. From the drop down menu, you can then choose the other pixel events, in this case, add to cart, and you can put in a time zone there, uh, so a time frame there. And then initiate checkout, you can choose that one again, and you can create that audience. So really simple. Um, and just to illustrate this again, you can go to create audience and custom audience. And then we can choose website traffic. And then for all website visitors, just put in the time window, we give it a name, create the audience. And then just from the drop-down menu there, you can choose your other pixel events, like add to cart here, give it a time. And then we can be choosing our next one. Um, so we can be looking at initiate checkout and again, give that a time window. And we could also be doing that with our purchases if we want to be excluding those. So very, very simple to set up those audiences. The pixel events sh will show um, in the custom audience section as long as you've got them on your website there. So if you're segmenting out by um, different stages of the funnels, the main thing is to get your inclusions and your exclusions right. This is what confuses people. So you might just want to um, just rewatch this webinar afterwards. Or if you want to help there, you can always go and tweet us at, at Espresso. But basically what we do is on a piece of paper, just map out your includes and your excludes for Facebook there. So if you start off with seven day website visitors, you exclude the other audiences later in the funnel. If you then go to an add to cart audience, you would then exclude the initiate checkouts and purchases, which are further down the funnel. And then if we're using initiate checkouts, we'd exclude every other stage. So that means you've got zero overlap there. Each time we're making sure that we're only showing one campaign to one audience there, there's gonna be no overlap. So that's the way of doing it there, is really think about your includes and your excludes for each stage of the funnel. To give you an example, this is in Ad Espresso. It's the same in Business Manager is that we'd put in our include audience in this day, in this case, a four day website visitors, and then we exclude our add to cart, initiate checkouts and purchases there. So very, very simple to set up some segmenting ads there for different stages of the funnel. Um, next, we're gonna move on. We're gonna be looking at how we can sequence retarget, right, retargeting ads. I know we get a lot of calls about how we can do this, um, where what we're really doing is putting a time window on each audience so that we can show ads to people in a sequence there. Um, the best way to illustrate this is with a little case study. And so this is one of our clients there called Globin. They do a fair trade subscription box. So once people visit the website, um, they basically sell a subscription box and also some products in their shop on their website there. So what they might do is on days one to four is they might try and go for a big win. So they want to get a three month box subscription quite a lot of revenue, a long-term commitment out of the customer. So they're giving their um, quite a big discount there. So that's what we're doing. You know, within, within a few days of visiting the website, they're gonna be hit with this <laughs> offer here saying, hey, here's $20 off, sign up for um, three months. Now, for some people that might be too big a commitment. So what they can do after that is to be, days five to eight, we might say, okay, let's just try and get a subscription. So we're not asking for three months here. We're just asking for one month recurring and we're going to give them a smaller offer in return for there. So we're, we're kind of lowering, lowering the barrier to entry there. Um, what we can then do is um, if people after, after the first week haven't gone and subscribed, we might say, OK, we're not going to get a subscription. Let's lower that barrier again with a one off shop sale. And we're just going to give them a smaller item here, in this case, a free basket. Now, after day 12, if they really haven't clicked through and purchased after then, we're kind of losing their audience a bit. So what we're gonna do is throw one final offer in there. It's probably what I'd call a tripwire sale. So very low commitment, there's a, a $10 subscription there. 
So, you know, we're trying to get three months out of them. If we don't get that with a big discount, we give um, one month with a smaller discount. Then we try and go for a one-off purchase. If we don't get that, we're not going to give up quite yet. We're going to throw out one last offer, like a 10 buck offer out there. So sequencing can work. And it's just really working out what kind of offers you're going to give people and what audiences to use there. So again, it's all about getting the includes and the excludes in the right order. Uh, in the right sequence there so what we would generally do is <clears throat> the first campaign we might be having the first um, four days of website visitors and we show them that offer now what what's really hard to do is create a five to eight day audience but there's a simple tip that we can achieve that with so what we do is we include a one to eight day audience and this is why i'm saying create loads of different time windows in advance there so we include that audience and then we exclude the ones that we used in the first campaign. So that means by default, people will see ads from day five to eight. And then to get that um, uh, from days nine to 12, what we would do is we'd include a one to 12 audience and we're gonna exclude the one to eight audience there. So how does this look? Here's an example here in Adespresso, exactly the same in Business Manager. We put in our include of like our eight day audience um, this is for showing ads to people for days five to eight. So we'd put our eight day audience in and then we'd exclude our four day audience and also our 180 day purchase audience there. Um, now I just wanted to give you a little tip on this. Um, a lot of people get the sequencing wrong with the kind of offers that they use. So generally your very warmest audience are the people that are going to visit in the first four days. So give them the best offer then. And then like we've seen in the case study, that's when we can then kind of lower the offer and lower the barrier to entry and um, a lot of people do it wrong that they, they try and give like a small discount at first and then they think okay you know let, let's try and not give too much away and then the longer that people are in the sequence then i'm going to up the ante with a bigger offer i can understand the logic but generally you know if somebody hasn't uh, converted in the last week it, well in the first week they're probably not that interested so giving them a bigger offer might not help let's go and just front load the offers give them the best offer straight away as soon as they visited the site and you'll generally find that converts very well there so what kind of creative do we use for retargeting it's generally quite different to what we do in cold traffic ads and of course it's always about testing i'll give this disclaimer for anything we created ad espresso because we believe you should always be testing as much as possible but you know what we do in our cold traffic is we put these nice lifestyle ads out there generally videos try and get people to just really engage with the brand and then what we want to do once they've visited our website is really just hit them with you know quite a blunt offer really so this is an example i pulled this from the facebook ads gallery that we've got in ad espresso and it's a subscription it, um, called Scentbird, they do like a monthly perfume subscription. You'll see the image there, very, very simple. They're not using video, it's very product focused, not lifestyle focused at all. And they're just saying, hey, you know, join, join today and you get a free cologne. Mm -hmm. And you look at the headline there, very simple, subscribe today, get a free cologne. Um, and they're just like name checking some of the brands there. So they take out all distractions, keep it very, very simple just calling out the offer straight away. And I'd certainly recommend testing that. Just don't try and go too fancy with the retargeting offers there. Um, so at this stage, Tori, have we got any questions that have come in so far? Hey, Paul, we do. Uh, all right, our first one here is from Rich, a little bit more of a specific one. Uh, what are some good ad strategies for nursing homes? <laughs> Nursing homes, I mean, what I would always say with something like that is you really want to try and grab the email. Um, once you've got that email, you can then put them into an email um, welcome sequence. So you can, again, we want to automate as much as possible. And so that's what I'd re be doing is get them on the website, really just give them a, a good lead magnet, something that's going to be useful to the person, like a, a guide on how to choose the best nursing home. So you're not going to heavily brand brand this at all. You want to give people some really good value. So get that um, get that email off them, and then just really think about retargeting with some events. What we want to do is um, drive people off Facebook. Actually, we don't want to keep them on Facebook for too long. It's going to be a lot easier with something like that to. Um, close the deal in person. So have some kind of welcome day, some kind of open day, some kind of event. Um, once you get that person in to visit the nursing home, it's going to be a lot easier to close the deal then. 
All right. Our next one is from Nicole B. She asked, do you recommend doing retargeting ads like these right off the bat when taking on new clients? Um, yes, I actually, um, people sometimes get the, well, to me, I think it's the wrong way around. So what they try and do is drive the cold traffic and then they set up the retargeting. But I would actually set up the retargeting first, even though it's gonna spend very little money. If you've got that kind of, that net there to catch people and retarget to them, then it means that you can build up your cold traffic campaigns. And we see this for a lot of clients that what will generally happen is your cold traffic campaigns break even and then you make really good profit out of your retargeting. So what that means is we can then look at the overall um, ROI from the whole funnel rather than looking too closely at one campaign. And so we can then scale cold traffic campaigns a lot, lot better because they only need to break even. As long as they feeding traffic at a reasonable cost per click to retargeting, we can keep pumping more and more money into them, scale up that client. So yes, the first thing I do with any client is on day one, I set up retargeting. And only once I've got my retargeting funnel in place do I look at cold traffic campaigns. Um, so yeah, I think we've got time for one more and then we'll move on to some other campaigns. Uh, sure, uh, we have another one. Is it also possible to sequence ads without custom audience, only sequence based on reach? Um, so yes, you can do this for time windows. Um, like the engagement audiences, definitely dig into that section there. So with video views, for example, you could create an audience that uh, of people that have watched 50% of your video. Um, there's different percentage windows you can create there. But for example, with 50%, you could create an audience of people that have watched that within four days. And then again, you can create another audience for eight days and 12 days and so on, and just get your includes and excludes right. So yeah, even if somebody's selling on say, Amazon or Kickstarter and just can't use pixels, then by using video ads, you can do things that way. You could also, for example, run a competition on Instagram and get people to like the post to enter. And then we could be creating an uh, Instagram engagement audience. And again, we could be sequencing that and give them more information about the brand. So definitely we can do that there. Um, yeah, so thanks for your questions. Keep them coming in. We'll get through to some more later. Um, but for now, we're gonna move on to seasonal retargeting. Um, so we've covered so far three retargeting strategies for Evergreen. And so generally, a lot of those are going to be used for maybe two weeks. Um, we can't be running our Evergreen campaigns forever. So, of course, those people, like we saw with the conveyor belt analogy, is they're going to drop out of retargeting. What do we do with them then? Well, we're not going to give up with them. They're still valuable audiences. They're not going to be super hot, but they're still very warm audiences. So what we then do is we can move them into seasonal retargeting. Um, and so what we want to do is we don't really just want to do random offers. We don't want to go and say, hey, come back to our website, you know, when they might have visited two, years, sorry, two months ago and just basically just put a product out there. That's not really going to engage with people. What all the best retailers do is theme their offers. Um, so we can be looking at things like Valentine's, Mother's Day, um, certainly in US and UK, we've got Father's Day coming up in a week's time. There's so many, you've got Easter, Labor Day, look at your country, there's, there's always so many events that are going on. And they don't always have to be related to the product. I mean, you, the classic examples you might see uh, like mattress companies or couch companies, they've always got some themed big promotional event coming on for whatever they can jump on there but it just sparks more interest in the ads. Uh, remember there are now 6 million advertisers on Facebook and we wanna make our ads stand out from that competition. And that's where some seasonal retargeting can work very well. Um, as to how often we can run these, we usually recommend around about two promotions a month. And then we just run them to the results decline. So look at your cost per sale or look at your cost per lead. Um, you know, run them and then once you see that that is going up in, in, in cost, and also keep an eye on the frequency rate, then we might decide, okay, it's time to pause it, let's work on our next offer. So let that audience have a little rest and then move on to the next one. And also I'd really recommend excluding the audiences that you're using in your evergreen funnel. We've already covered how to exclude those. So for example, if we have an, have an evergreen funnel running for the first 14 days, we'd then exclude that from our seasonal retargeting. So let's have a look at an example here. I just pulled this out of the Ad Espresso ads gallery. Um, so these are real live ads. Walmart here, I think they showed this 
probably a week or two ago when it was Memorial Day. Um, as well as jumping on Memorial Day, they're thinking about, hey, what's the spring summer trends? So we're going to be having pools. We're going to be having outdoor furniture there. Um, I also look through in what Walmart did um, six months ago is they had some Christmas themed ads. So, hey, shop some holiday gifts for your dogs, which Tori on the call is probably doing for her dog there. Um, and then if we dig back a little bit, then we can be looking at what they did for Thanksgiving, some turkey themed images, and they're just talking about some Thanksgiving there. So yeah, they could just be using a generic kind of stock. Hey, go and spend $150 and you get $10 off, but it's gonna be much better if they theme this to certain seasons there. It just really makes your ad stand out in the newsfeed and get people to engage with it there. So if you want some tips on what kind of marketing themes to use, um, if you go to GoToWebinar, you'll see the handout section there and you can download the handout um, that we've got here, this Ad Espresso marketing calendar. Or if you're not watching live, then um, they, we've got a blog post on this, adespresso.com slash blog um, slash marketing hyphen calendar there. And you can download our two, 2018 holiday ads planner. Um, something that's very useful, and this is typical Twitter, they tend to hide it away, but Twitter have produced a fantastic Twitter calendar for the year. And the reason I like it is it's actually based on tweet volume from last year. So this isn't just picking up random things like I think yesterday it was Hug Your Cat Day. They're actually looking at things that are generating lots and lots of tweets. Um, so if, again, if you go to go to webinar, I've included that handout and you can download that. Um, if you don't manage to go and catch that live, then just go to business.twitter.com. Um, it's such a useful resource and they just hide it away, but just go to their business blog and you can find it there. Um, I think you can't download the full year from there, but you should be able to get the latest month. It is very US centric. That's the only thing I will say. It's definitely based around the US, um, but something you can probably adapt to other countries there. Um, so what, how do we do our seasonal retargeting? Um, what we do, and I do this generally on, on the, the first week of the year, is I can start mapping out my key dates for the year. So it's going to be the big things like Thanksgiving, Christmas, Valentine's. It really going to depend on the client, what your goals are. Um, but we're going to be putting in the real pillars of advertising there. So some of those big seasonal campaigns. What we're going to do next is we're then going to be looking at how we can be putting in new product launches. So a lot of my clients, they might be doing some Kickstarters or well, throughout the year, they're going to be rolling out some new product lines. And so we can then slot them um, in so that they're not going to clash with some of the seasonal promotions there. But then if you've got gaps there, maybe you're working with some third parties. So a lot of my clients, they might run competitions or just do some new product launches with some third parties there. So they can fit those into the spare gaps. Now, you probably are going to have some spares there. You know, like we're saying, you know, two a month, that's quite a lot, especially in the summer months. There's not quite so many events. So that's where we can fill in the, the fun national days or the international days. Um, and there's definitely lots of websites where you can find those. Just put that into Google and you can find calendars of all these random national days. You don't want to be jumping on all of them, but if there's some big ones that you can find there, that's good. So use the Ad Espresso calendar, use the Twitter calendar, then start mapping out your own, then go internally and say, okay, what products have we got? Are we working with any other partners? And then we fill in the gaps from there. Um, Hootsuite are really good at this. They're obviously our parent company um, and they've got a really strong focus on the organic social media side of things. Um, they produced a really good blog and from that blog post, you can download uh, tons of different content calendars. They pasted them all in um, Google Sheets and Google Docs. So the post is here. Um, if, you're not, if you just can't find it from that URL, just um, Google Hootsuite, how to create a social media content calendar. And you should easily find that blog there. Um, extremely useful resources in there. So now we've looked at some of our retargeting campaigns. We're going to dive into some of our audiences that we can use. And certainly one of the most powerful is our email custom audience there. Like we um, on that question earlier, I'm really a big fan of where possible capturing that email. Maybe you're doing lead gen. Well, maybe if you're selling a product, we could still be having pop-ups there to capture emails in exchange for maybe like a little coupon code or some discounts. We'll come to some offers a little bit later on. 
Now, there's pros and cons to using this audience, just like with any audience. So the real advantage that you get there from using an email custom audience is it can last forever. However old your email list, I've got clients that have been around for several years now, they can still be using that audience. Whereas our pixel audience only lasts for 180 days. Now, there are some engagement audiences that last for 365 days, um, but the majority of the audiences that you use based on pixels are gonna be 180 days there. And certainly I don't think there's any that go over a year. So email's very, very good. Um, disadvantage is the match rate is lower, that what happens is a lot of people on Facebook use a different email address day to day that they give out compared to the one at attached to their Facebook account. That's certainly um, my case personally. So you'll find the match rate is around about 60 to 70% for consumer campaigns. B2B probably gonna be lower, maybe around about 50% there. Um, so the conclusion there is use both website custom audiences and emails. I don't think one's better than the others. I think it's a case of using both. Um, and what I find as well is that sometimes the people that purchased from you last holiday season are the one that are most likely to purchase from you again. So if you're running some campaigns, you know, last Christmas, and then you're running the new Christmas campaigns this year, then the people that are in that email audience from 2017 could be extremely powerful there. So I'm definitely a big fan if I've got some of my seasonal campaigns that we covered um, just now with the content calendar, when we were looking at the seasonal key dates, then I think email audiences can be extremely useful for you. So how do we create these? What we could do there is go to create audience, uh, custom audience again, but this time choose customer file. And then we're going to be choosing the top option to add email lists. And then we get an option to upload a CSV file and just choose a random one here. So we upload that, give it a name. Um, you can change that name, otherwise it gives you the name from your CSV file. And then what Facebook will do is try and match things up. Now it's not always accurate. Like in this case, it's looking at a customer ID and it thinks it's a phone number. So you need to manually go through each field and make sure it's choosing the right thing. Like it missed out in this case, first names and last names. Um, now I haven't gone through all of these, but there's things like address fields. Uh, the main one of course is to make sure that it's picked up the email address field in the right place. Once it's done that, click it to upload on there. And then it'll tell you how many rows it's matched. And then you can start creating look like audiences or create an ad off there. Um, so yeah, don't assume that Facebook matches the fields correctly. It looks very, very simple that, you know, if you've got like somebody's date of birth there, that it should be mapping up date of birth. A lot of times it will think it's a phone number or something completely random. So go through that very carefully. Also, sometimes if you've got like a email list where it's got the recipient gift email and also the person that orders it, sometimes it gets confused between those. So definitely don't just blindly hit the buttons, spend just 30 seconds making sure everything's matched properly. Now, if you're an AdEspresso user, you can also do this in AdEspresso. Um, you just go to Tools, Asset Manager, and then from there you pick Custom Audience. And once you've gone from there, you choose an audience from a data file, very similar process to Facebook. You just give it a name, you pick an email um, address custom audience and you upload your file there. Um, the two sync between platforms, they sync in real time. So it doesn't really matter what platform that you use there, just whatever you're most familiar with. So what we really want to be doing there is be thinking about how we can automating it. Obviously it's gonna be a complete pain if, every week or every day, depending on your volume of leads, we've got to be updating our files all the time there. Um, we don't want to be going into our C uh, CRM, downloading a CSV file, uploading it to Facebook, and then having to create a new lookalike audience off that. Nobody's got time for that. So we really want to be thinking about how we can automate that. Um, so we can automate it in a couple of ways. If you're running Facebook lead ads, this is where you create the, um, so this is where you capture leads on Facebook. We could be sending them to our CRM because Facebook by default just dumps them into a CSV file. And so every time you get a lead, you don't want to be having to send them an email manually with their lead magnet. We want to be automating this. So that's where we need to be using a sync tool. We can also, of course, go the other way. So leads that go to our CRM, we can be putting that into a website custom audience. And if we can get those synced up, then if the audience is dynamic, 
then any lookalike audiences based off those um, are going to be dynamic. So we can see that's really going to help our cold traffic audiences as well. If we're run, running some retargeting campaigns, getting leads, we could be then automating those. And then we've got a lookalike audience that's dynamically updating. And then we could be running everything on autopilot. What we always want to be doing as Facebook marketers is automating as much as possible. Let's go for a nice early finish on Friday. Let's go and take a vacation. Let's go and get Facebook to do all the heavy lifting for us. So how do we set up these automated syncs? Um, if you've got Ad Espresso, this is a something we've really focused on, is that we have Ad Espresso data sync. Um, it's included as part of your Ad Espresso plan. And so you choose your source audience like Facebook and then going to a CRM, or you can be going the other way around there. Um, and we've also got Google Sheets included. So if you need like a halfway step, you can do it in there. So to set these up, you go to tools and you just go to data sync there. And then from there, like we've seen, you just choose your source audience. You then choose where to send it to and you can do that. So lots and lots of options there, um, all within Ad Espresso. And I'm just going to give you a sneak preview. We've only released this within the last couple of days. So we're now offering the ability to mul um, sync up multiple CR CRMs. <clears throat> so maybe you're an agency, you're working with multiple clients and they've all got their own MailChimp account, then you can be adding multiple ones of those. So giving you lots of options within the same tool that you're using to create your, um, your ad campaigns there. Now, it may also be the case that maybe you're not using Ad Espresso. <laughs> Fine, we won't judge you. Um, there are other ways that we can do this. So you could be looking at using Zapier, especially if you're sending things to, um, you might be able to send things to Google Sheets and then from there send it to Facebook. Um, we find with Zapier is it generally just goes in one direction that it can go from lead ads to your CRM. It doesn't really work that well with going from the CRM to custom audiences. So a little bit limited, but check it out if it works for you. There are some free plans. And then if you need a premium plan, they're only about 20 bucks a month. It's not um, super expensive tool there. So you'll find there's lots of other things. Like sometimes I send my um, calendar appointments to my Trello board and things as well. So the more you start using Zapier, the more you can automate there. Now, if you do require going from, um, as you probably will, from your CRM to Facebook custom audiences, then definitely check out Leadsbridge. Um, it says here in this slide 290 CR CRMs. Last time I checked, I think they're at 320. They're very active in development. Pricing starts from about 20 bucks a month, very similar to Zapier, not super expensive. Um, I don't particularly endorse any one of these tools. My only thing I will say, and I really recommend this, is go with something that's trusted, that's a big name, a well known brand, gets lots of reviews. Remember, these people are handling your data. Um, and certainly with GDPR now, if you're based in Europe or you've got a European customers, um, you're responsible for how this data is being processed. So if you go for one of these super cheap systems that's uh, just based with a developer in their back bedroom um, and they don't really have any reviews, you've never heard of them before, be very careful. They're handling your data. Um, so this is where I really want to go with a trusted platform. As we've seen, they're not going to be too expensive. But, you know, if you can go through Ad Espresso, that means there's one less tool, one less expense there. Um, it just makes it a lot, lot simpler there. There's also one called Drift Rock. I know John Lima's used this as well. Um, again, I don't think he says he's got hey, any personal preference. He doesn't really endorse a particular sync there, but it's a, a well-known brand there. Um, they don't put pricing on their website, so it's probably more for enterprise customers, but it's definitely an option out there. Um, now that we've covered the types of campaigns that you use and also audiences, let's have a look at some of the offers that we can use. So four main offers to think about. Um, you obviously don't have to give people an incentive for retargeting that sometimes we just need to get in front of them again. But generally to get really good success, we want to retarget with a little offer to sweeten the deal to get them to come back. Um, free accessories, free shipping. Uh, money off or maybe a percentage discount there. Now we're going to be covering free accessories in a case study in a second, but just before that, um, you know, common question, should we use a percentage or money off? Now I've looked at loads of studies on this and lots of blog articles and there's not one conclusive answer. I think if I was to summarize it, in general, the largest number wins. 
So let's have a look at example. If you've got a $25 item and we reduce it to 20 bucks, um, get 25% off sounds a lot better than say $5. So I might be going with a percentage discount. But you know, let's look at a $200 item. Saving $20 sounds a lot better than, hey, just get 10% off. So look for the big numbers, but you know, always test these things. Um, and that's why I think there's a lot of discrepancy that some of these case studies saying percentage is better, some money off better, and I really think it depends on the price point there. Um, but something that's really overlooked is giving away some free add-ons instead. People get really focused on this percentage on money off. And to be honest, it's a strategy I don't really use much. I much prefer what we're gonna see now, which is um, how to do some free add-ons. Um, so this is a case study. Um, this is a uh, Ad Espresso customer called Rugby Warfare. So big shout out to Scott, really great guy. Um, he's based in the UK, but he sells rugby apparel to the US and really any of the main rugby playing nations. Um, so I know some of our audience tuning in today probably haven't really heard about rugby, but don't worry, it's just another sport out there. It's got a really strong following there, just like you would get with American football, baseball, or soccer, or whatever out there. Um, so he can really find a good audience to target to. So what we came up with on some coaching calls is to give a free add-on. <clears throat> So what he's done is he can buy t-shirts in bulk and get it printed with a brand there. And listed on the website at a sensible price, um, 22 pounds last time I checked, that's around about 31 US dollars. <clears throat> it's a sensible price for a t-shirt, maybe slightly on the high end, but kind of what it, it's what I'd pay every day for a t-shirt there. Now he can buy these in bulk for two pound 50, which is about $3.30. So it's something where, you know, by buying in bulk, getting custom printed, you can buy them cheap, but from a customer perspective, they look like they're worth a lot of money on the website. Now, the aim is not to actually sell this product for 22 pounds here. Instead, what we can do is use that in retargeting. So in this ad here, um, it's tweak the price a little bit over time, um, but basically we can say, right, if you go and um, shop in the next 48 hours, um, we're going to give you this free T-shirt worth £25. So everybody wins with this. We've we've created a time-sensitive offer. The customer gets a good deal. They get a T-shirt worth over £20, i.e. over £30. Bucks. Um, from the retailer point of view, they've got them in bulk. It's a very cheap offer there. You know, much, much better than going, hey, here's 5% off. So what? Nobody cares about 5% off. It's not going to move the needle. We can give a big offer, but it's not costing us much. Um, so you probably want to know what the results on, on this are. So let's dive in there. Um, this is custom audience of people that I've added to cart in the last 14 days. Spent £5.39, that's under $10, and got nearly £200 back there. Very, very high ROI there, crazy high ROI. Um, we could be looking at the initiate checkout audience. Just like I said, with sequencing, we want to go for a little bit longer. In this case, quite a small audience, so we've gone for 30 days. So spent 23 pounds, got 255 back there, 10x ROI there. And that cost per conversion, under a couple of dollars. Yes, you've got to add on the price of t-shirts, but that's going to be a lot better than giving a high discount, like you know, $20 off or 20 pounds off or whatever there. It's a strategy that benefits everybody. So what I'd ask you is, can you apply this to your own business? Maybe you're selling sunglasses. Can you give people a free case? Buy a thousand of the cases. They're gonna cost you nothing from Alibaba. Um, mark it up at a sensible price. Everybody gets a good deal. Um, very, very common if you buy, you know, the big bags of protein online, then a lot of times they give you a free protein shaker. They probably buy 10,000 of them at a time. They cost them a dollar. They're worth $8 when they give them away great retargeting incentive there. Um, maybe you're not doing e-commerce. <clears throat> um, what we did in um, previously in, in the year, if we were doing some coaching course, sorry, if we were doing um, some paid for courses, we could give away a free coaching session. Takes up my time, um, but there's no monetary 
uh, cost on there, much better than giving like $100 off there. So with just about everything, you could apply it there. Um, maybe even if you're doing lead gen there, then you've got that bundle of eBooks that you can give away. We do this for our espresso. If somebody's visited our website and they haven't signed up as a lead, we bundle all our best um, lead magnets together into one super bundle and then retarget with people there. So those free add-ons and accessories work incredibly well. Now we're gonna move on now to the last topic. We're gonna wrap things up and we're just gonna go into some of the more technical considerations here. So now we've got our campaigns to run, we've got our audiences, and then we moved on to what offers we're gonna give. We've now got to think about how we actually set up our optimization and budget on Facebook there. Um, so what you'll find with a lot of these campaigns is you're probably getting good ROI, and then it's a case of how do we scale these campaigns? Um, so what I'd say is we want to use a kind of go big or go home strategy here. If we're getting good ROI, and definitely make sure you're tracking that ROI, but if you're hitting all your benchmarks there, we want to think how we, can we expand this out here. So first is think about that optimization. Um, for small but well-defined audiences, and I will iterate this, um, we wouldn't be using this on cold traffic at all. If we've got a small, well-defined audience, then maybe we want to optimize for reach or impressions. You know, if the limiting factor to sales or leads is just how many people you can reach in that audience. Obviously, if it's like a seven-day website audience, or maybe it's like add to cart to initiate checkouts, it's going to be quite a small audience. So if we need to scale this campaign, let's optimize for reach or link clicks so we can reach, sorry, reach or impressions to reach more people. Now, if you've got a mid-sized audience, maybe we want to optimize for link clicks or landing page views. So again, we're, we're kind of balancing it up that we're now focusing a bit more on the quality of people that we show ads to, um, but we, we still want to reach quite a few people there. And then we'd only really optimize for conversions if we're going to be getting 50 per ad set per week. So common mistake I see a lot of people with these small audiences, maybe they've got a couple of thousand in the audience, and they're running e-commerce and they optimize for conversions. Now that only makes sense if you're gonna complete the Facebook learning phase and that learning phase needs around about 50 conversions per ad set per week. You're not gonna do that with that small audience. You might only be getting a handful of conversions per week. So only optimize for conversions if we're getting a big audience. Now there's no set audience size on this, but of course, you know, I haven't said so far, this is X number of people in the audience. This is what you optimize for. Because one, you've really got to be testing, and two, it really depends on how well defined the audience is. But certainly, if you've just got a few thousand people, think about and you're hitting the ROI, optimize for impressions or reach. Maybe if we're in the tens of thousands, um, certainly, you know, 20, 30,000, we might be optimizing for landing page views or link clicks. And only if we're sort of getting into the volume of people that can like we're saying, getting 50 conversions, would we be looking to optimize for conversions? I would ask the question though on retargeting, if you are working with really large audiences for evergreen retargeting, can we segment them out instead? Um, for example, at Ad Espresso, um, we could be separating out the people that visit the pricing page from the people that have just visited our blog page. So people that have just visited the blog, they're just interested in getting our free educational resources. Absolutely no, fine, no problem with that, that's fine, that's what we put them out there for, but maybe we want to focus more of our retargeting on people that have visited a pricing page and just mention the free trial to them. They're going to be more of an interested audience there. So if you are working with audience, big audiences, fine, we could try optimizing for conversions, but we could be segmenting them out as we've covered earlier in this webinar. In terms of bidding, start with automatic bid most of the time. If we're getting a good ROI, Let's try a high custom bid. Remember, each ad we place goes into an auction, and we want to signal to Facebook, hey, let's see if we can win more auctions to get in front of more uh, users there. Um, within Ad Espresso, you can put in a high custom bid. Um, if you're on Facebook, it really depends what version of Ads Manager that you've got. So one of my accounts, this is actually the Ad Espresso ad account. It's got the same style as Ad Espresso, but you put in a high manual bid. And then Facebook are rolling out the a new version of bid strategy. So they have either lowest cost or target cost. Now, if you want to bid high on this, um, from what I can tell, you use target cost with a high 
um, bid put in there. That seems to be doing the same thing as the old custom bid that they use there. So that can work incredibly well. Sometimes you've got to be careful that you don't have um, too many ads or too many ad sets there. Um, so the bidding is going to work at ad set level. Just make sure that you've got enough budget as well. There's no point in putting a really high custom bid <coughs> if you're not going to give each ad set enough budget there. Um, but generally, if you're getting good ROI, increasing how much you're going to pay for each impression is going to be worth it. Now, one of the most common things I get asked in coaching calls is how much budget should I spend on retargeting? Like people want me to say X percent of your overall um, client budget there. But I think there's a different way of looking at it. And so the way that I'd be looking at retargeting is first of all, be thinking about how Facebook works. So Facebook has got a built-in safety cap. Is that it's not gonna be possible to show ads to people 10 times a day or 100 times a day. People worry that if they've got an audience of say a thousand people in it and they then you know give the campaign hundred dollars that Facebook's just going to be spamming people non-stop in their newsfeed each day. Um, but luckily it can't happen. So um, this changes over time but I checked this recently and Facebook at the moment can show an ad to people four times a day from your page. If they're on Instagram they'll see an ad every six hours and Instagram stories they've put out 18 hours. And there's a nice interesting caveat that Facebook put in the documentation. In general, it's easier for somebody to show an ad for the first time than to see the same ad again. So basically during that day, they're gonna ramp up the difficulties. So um, most people will only see your ad once a day. Some will see it two, three times a day, but four times a day is gonna be quite hard to achieve there. So really don't worry if you've got well-defined custom audiences that for your evergreen campaigns about setting a high budget there because we you know even if we max out and show everybody the maximum number of ads it's not going to be too high and um, it's really about getting those time windows right there so of course if we people are seeing ads up to four times a day we don't want to be doing that for 180 days that's where we use a four-day window or maybe a seven-day window and so on um, this is an example here from one of our ad espresso campaigns um, we put the budget here of $75 a day, but because it's a small audience and there's that built-in cap, like we've got this audience of seven-day um, visitors to certain pages, then the campaign's only spending on average about $20 a day. <clears throat> so what I can do is I can put in quite a high daily budget, and then over time, maybe I'm scaling up my cold traffic campaigns. I'm feeding more traffic through to the website. I don't need to change the the um, the budget there for retargeting because it can just grow with the campaign. So a lot of them, I've got campaigns that I put a budget of like 100 or even $200 in, and they might only spend five or $10 a day, but I'm saying to Facebook, hey, I dare you to spend as much as possible there. Um, so this is why I wanna be setting up my retargeting before I set up my cold traffic, and I can put in quite high bids there. And then I'm just letting Facebook spend as much as possible and then I can work back from that and then I can see how much budget it's using and then I can then go and allocate the rest to my cold traffic campaigns. Probably a lot of times you're only spending 10 or 20 percent on uh, retargeting but really you know if you're getting good results spend as much as you can there. In terms of placements to use if you're getting good ROI then just use as many placements as possible there. That for, you know, if, if the limiting factor is how many people you can reach, let's go and use quite a lot of placements. And then just some tips here to finish up with um, on retargeting. This is for small retargeting audiences. So remember, not just like every big audience you can find. If the audience is the limiting factor, that size, then think about using as many placements as you can. Keep split testing to a reasonable minimum. Um, we don't want to be creating hundreds of ad sets if we've got an audience of a few hundred or a few thousand. On the other hand, though, we do want to balance. So we don't want to be pausing everything apart from the best ad um, because people might be seeing an ad multiple times a day. So in some ways, it's all about balance. You know, don't I don't need to think I'm kind of contradicting myself here, but we don't want to be having hundreds of ads and ad sets. On the other hand, we don't just want to have one. Around about four to six ads is quite nice. So if somebody's seeing an ad for seven days or they're seeing it multiple times a day, they're gonna see a bit of variety, um, but we're not gonna be confusing the system by having 10 ad sets all bidding on this very small audience. That's just really gonna mess up the distribution there.
Now, your frequency rate will be high, um, but don't worry about this. Just think about the time window that you're using. So a lot of times in cold traffic campaigns, maybe we're keeping the, the um, retargeting audience, uh, so the frequency there um, for that cold traffic audience who might be keeping frequency under two or three, um, but for retargeting, it can be a lot higher. But don't worry, as long as we put a decent time window on there. Um, so just some little assignments. These are informal. We're not going to mark you on this. But if you wanted some action points um, and really implement what we've gone through in this webinar, create some custom audiences with those various time windows. They're completely free to create. Make sure that you create the audiences based off different pixel events like leads, add to carts, purchases. <clears throat> Um, find a way to sync your email custom audiences. Make your life easier. Let Facebook automate it for you. So think about using our Espresso Data Sync or Leadsbridge or Zapier or Driftrock or so on. Um, map out con content calendar. You don't have to do a year ahead. Just think of the next quarter. Um, <clears throat> the more you can work ahead, the more you can book your assets with your graphic designers and so on. And the easier your life is going to be. We do not want any stress when we're doing Facebook marketing. Um, create these different offers. Can we create a coupon code for money off? Can we create a coupon code for percentage off? Um, what free accessories can you do? Is there anything that you can do? Most businesses I speak to, you know, if somebody's selling necklaces like a really nice pendant, they can give away a free chain because they buy those in bulk. Um, like we say, with sunglasses, with cases, with protein, you can do shakers. And with shoes, you could do a shoe shine kit. Um, there's endless things they can do. You can always find some way of applying it to your business. And then just if everything's working really well for you, go and revisit your campaigns and think, you know, how can we go big or go home? Can you add in more placements? Can you up the bids on those? Can you up the budget on there of the ones with the best ROI? So um, that's it. Thanks for joining me for this hour. We're going to take questions in a second. But as a little reward here for joining me today, <clears throat> just wanted to give you a very special offer. It's exclusive to this webinar. Um, we would like you to join us at Ad Espresso here um, just for $1. So as well as having some really good um, software to go and split test and analyze your ads, we like to do lots of training like this. So within Ad Espresso University, we've got more webinars. We've got experiments where we spend $1,000 a month. We've got some free training courses and toys just finished our latest one. Um, we finished that last week. We have an ads gallery with 1.4 million real Facebook ads in it. And we have a private members only Facebook group. We've got nearly 6,000 marketers there and some community managers. Um, you can also use Ad Espresso for up to $500 of ad spend. You, of course, pay for the ad spend, but you get to use Ad Espresso um, for that. Um, so if you'd like to take advantage of that, um, the URL there, tinyurl.com forward slash AE webinar, as in Ad Espresso webinar. Um, that's just $1 for the first 30 days. If you do like it, you can join the university for $19 a month after that. Um, I've got a time window there uh, to the end of this month on there. We saying these are very limited offers that we do. So um, unfortunately we can't extend that coupon, but just give that a go if you'd like to see what uh, all the benefits of Ad Espresso and take advantage of all our um, resources there. So yeah, thanks for joining me. And I can see we've got lots of questions. So keep putting them in there. Um, and Toy's going to dive into some questions now. We'll try and answer as many as we've got time for. All right, Paul, thanks again for a fantastic webinar. I appreciate that. All thanks, right. Toy. Uh, looks like our first question here. Uh, when retargeting add to cart audiences, should you use the add to cart page of the website as the landing page so the user picks up right where they left off? Um, depend. Yes. Well, you, yeah, I think I probably would. I would go straight into either that or definitely a product page. So um, certainly for cold traffic, I, I'm really talking about the lifestyle of the brand and I take them through to a home page or a page that explains all the benefits of the products, like a features and benefits page. But definitely when I'm retargeting, I either take them straight through to the product um, or I could be taking them through to the shop home page there. All right. Uh, so it looks like we have a couple recommendation based questions. First one is, do you have any strategy recommendations for travel agents? Um, travel agents, um, I would definitely go with <laughs> um, reasonably tight time windows and definitely try and just like really hammer them at, as much as possible. Like we we talked about in the last section there. Um, I, I booked a hotel and in um, January and I went to it in February and I'm still getting retargeted with ads. 
um, from that company now. And it's like, hey, I went on that trip, you know, four or five months ago. Please stop retargeting me. So definitely time windows. Just really be thinking about that for if you're doing anything with travel agents there. Um, and yeah, if you do find that there is a longer lead time from consideration to people booking their main vacation, it can happen with big summer and family vacations. Then be thinking about giving them that guide. Is there a brochure you can download and getting that email so that you can then do your regular kind of like weekly or monthly marketing there. The time windows would be a, a really good recommendation. I know that time when uh, so that Facebook is also rolling out dynamic product ads for travel as well. I think they do it for flights and hotels. Um, so it's not something I've actually used myself, but definitely dig into, there should be some Facebook resources on setting up dynamic product ads. So if they've visited a certain hotel um, or a certain date, it should be able to dynamically retarget with details on that. So yeah, I'm not quite sure how complex that is to set up, but definitely have a look at that. All right. Uh, so same kind of basic uh, question here, a little bit more uh, advanced. Given the changes at Facebook, what are some strategies for local political campaigns? Are there important guidelines to be aware of? Very important guidelines on this. Um, so a very strong recommendation is to go to Facebook Blueprint. I think I put, I put up the URL earlier in the uh, in the webinar there, but just Google for Facebook Blueprint. It then links to your Facebook account. They released the module just like a week or two ago. Um, and it covers what you need to do. So it is very, very in depth. And yeah, we could run a whole webinar on there. But basically, every if, if you're based in the US, then every member of the team that's going to advertise has to get verified as well as the business. So they, they're going to send you a little um, code to an address in the US so that you then have to put into Facebook so they can see that you're a resident in the US. They can do some ID checks. They're going to be doing a lot of checks. So it's something that if you want to run political ads, you want to be getting this set up a month in advance because it is quite a lengthy verification process. But go to Facebook Blueprint, take the module, and it'll be a lot clearer on there. All right, uh, next one. What are your thoughts about using Carousel as the initial ad for an e-commerce site? Um, this goes down to personal preference, but I'm not a big fan of Carousel for cold traffic ads, um, especially obviously we use Ad Espresso for our ad creation. And really the key to success with cold traffic ads is A-B testing. So like you might be trying three different images, three different headlines and three different ad texts. The problem with a Carousel ad is it's very hard to tell what's working, what's not. So is it image one or is it image three? You can dig down and get the stats on this. You can go to the breakdown within Facebook Ads Manager or in Ad Espresso, we list them out. But really, Carousel doesn't work as a whole. Um, so it's very difficult to A-B test and get your, your cost down. Also, um, like we saw, 91% of ad traffic is on mobile. And really, less is more on there. You want one big, hard-hitting, high-contrast image or short video. Um, I find that carousels work better for retargeting. So, you know, if we're selling shoes, I'd be showing the nice pair of shoes, just a big image for cold traffic and be split testing maybe three of those. And then for retargeting, that's when you go, hey, do you want the brown version or do you want the black version or do you want the blue version and so on? So, yeah, I use it more for retargeting. I know some people do get some success with carousels for cold traffic, but I'd really be doing just high, high, like hard hitting ads for cold traffic. Next question here. Um, should you include as many relevant interests in a Facebook ad or is less more? Oh, this is a, a big topic for cold traffic campaigns. What I'd say is that um, certainly within Ad Espresso, we like to split test by interests and maybe about six different interests. Um, if you are split testing them, so then you can find out what's working, make sure they're reasonably distinctive. They're quite different. So, you know, you might be split testing cats versus dogs or uh, gin versus whiskey or something like that. You sometimes find that people are, are kind of using very, very similar interests. So they're kind of just carving up the same audience different ways. There's going to be a very big degree of audience overlap. So my, my starting strategy is six very distinct interests. And then you find out what interest resonates. And then you can be thinking, OK, this worked really well. Could I be customizing my ad copy based around that there? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, the problem sometimes is, is if you put like 
20 interests together in the campaign, you'll never be able to work out what interest is working and then what kind of angle to pitch the next uh, ad campaigns around. All right. Uh, Facebook rep told me it was okay to have a really high frequency, 14, for retargeting campaigns. Is this true? Um, yes, but with that big disclaimer as before about your audience windows or if you want to segment out into different um, audiences. So I've got retargeting ads running at over 10 that are producing very, very good ROI. Um, so you've got to remember that frequency is really a secondary consideration that what we got it, you know, if you're still getting good ROI, then don't pause the campaign just because an ROI has gone over three um, for retargeting. Um, you've got to be thinking though, if it's is quite high, could we be sequencing some ads? So if we were maybe showing some ads to people for eight days and this frequency is really getting quite high, then, you know, looking at the big picture about your overall brand experience, we're probably going to start annoying people. Um, so we've got to be thinking, well, could we be running a one to four day campaign and then a five to eight day campaign or something like that there? Can we mix it up a little bit more? Um, but yeah, broadly, I kind of agree that high frequency on its own isn't too big an issue. All right, next question here. Would you have any placement recommendations for retirement ready demographic age 50 plus? Um, I mean, I would say with just about any audience that mobile is where it's at. And certainly for the older demographics, people sometimes make the mistake of thinking they're all going to be on desktop. Um, but what I find, and this is maybe anecdotal, is a lot of them use iPads and cheap Android tablets. And remember, that's included uh, under the mobile placement. So a lot of seniors there are on their uh, $50 Amazon Kindle tablets that they get really cheap and a neighbor gives them or like a friend or relative at Christmas. So there's a big senior audience that are hanging out there on, on tablets. So definitely mobile on there. They're not all going to be on desktop there. Um, and really just test. You know, we will always think of Instagram being for millennials only, but there are now 800 million active users on Instagram. And some of those are seniors as well. So don't limit the placements too much for retargeting, especially with small audiences, but definitely don't leave out mobile. Just don't make any assumptions about your audience and think, oh, these they're, they're going to be fuddy-duddy. They're going to be just on, on really old laptops running Windows XP. It's not the case. They're on the, sometimes the latest tablets and on mobiles. So definitely include mobiles, but try some of the other placements as well. That actually leads us into our next question here. Do you run your ads on Facebook and Instagram, letting Facebook choose where to place the ad? Um, for retargeting, I do generally keep it quite simple like that. Um, for cold traffic, then you'll probably get better results if you can customize per platform. So the, the big problem you get on Instagram, why it sometimes underperforms, is that people are using um, their Facebook ads. So they're using a landscape image, this really highly photoshopped graphic <clears throat> and then they put like a discount code in the headline and then you get to Instagram and Instagram's designed for square images you want something that's a really natural photo you know probably slightly out focus taken on the fly um, and then of course it doesn't have a headline it only has the ad text so your nice coupon code gets cut off so for cold traffic definitely customized by platform for retargeting I think Sometimes I might do it, but generally I want to keep it simple and just use um, automatic placement selection by Facebook there. Right. Another strategy based one. What strategy would you use to target people for service based to businesses like building, heating and plumbing? Um, definitely a lead magnet. It's giving them this guide um, that we kind of touched on earlier, like maybe with the nursing home, is that you want to give some, uh, people some really good value. Um, I think Rick Moore already, it's probably a year or two ago, but he ran a very interesting case study on his um, podcast um, by a guy called Adam Sand, who was doing roofing contracting, who really built up his business by giving people this guide on how to choose your roofing because, you know, it's a subject that we generally don't deal with very often. And if you're in the market for a new roof, you're going to want a guide on that. So they just didn't brand it too heavily. And I actually managed to have a coaching call with Adam and he was doing really well with this just by giving people this lead magnet. And then we take people into an automated um, welcome sequence from there. 
and then retargeting just think can we give them more value do we then want to move the relationship on to booking a call or something like that but certainly what we've got to do is um, think that it's going to be a long consideration phase so we are going to be wanting to capture that email and then coming up with seasonal campaigns um, that's going to be really important and just don't expect people to jump on a call straight away you know these people are in the queue at Starbucks when they when you pop up an ad for like um, a vacation or roofing or contracting things like that is they going to want to think about it maybe they need to like for a vacation they need to check their diary they need to check with their partner in my case I need to check if somebody can um, cat sit where we're away you're not just going to go and book it straight away so that's why retargeting to keep giving them that daily nudge to get them to come back can be very useful there uh, next question is Facebook getting rid of the right column ad feed um I don't think so you certainly can't run um, I think you could just used to be able to run ads on right hand column without a um a facebook page linked to it but you now have to like do it like you would with any ad other ad on there and you just use it as another placement um so no right hand column can be very good for retargeting um remember only about 10 percent of people are on desktop so it's not going to be used all the time um but yes i find right hand columns good so the problem with right hand column for cold traffic is people don't know your business yet it's a very small ad it's not very engaging it doesn't work but for retargeting, when you need to get in front of people and you've got a very simple offer, a very simple coupon code, unless you structure the ad right, so the coupon code is right at the beginning of the ad text because you've only got about six words there. Um, it, it can sometimes be my highest ROI um, campaigns there is on right-hand column. So extremely useful. And remember always in Facebook advertising is because we're every single impression is in an auction, sometimes we need to think different. If everybody else zigs, we've got a zag. And so everybody's given up on right hand column. They're like, nobody's on there anymore. Um, everybody's on Instagram, all the millennials are on Instagram. So they leave right hand column alone. So we can sneak in under the radar and get extremely cheap CPM on right hand column. So, yeah, I don't think Facebook are take it away. I haven't heard anything, and it'd certainly be quite unusual for them to take away a placement that's been used really since day one on Facebook. All right, our next question here. What could be a good strategy for a restaurant in terms of retargeting? The website, unfortunately, gets reservations through open tables, so they're not really trackable. Um, sure, so this is really going to be your, your seasonal things here. Um, we've got Father's Day coming up, um, like in the US and UK, some other countries. So, hey, book now for um, Father's Day. Um, we might have a new dish on the menu, so we can be showing that there. Um, and always with these things, if we can, um, yeah, a lot of restaurants do work with third-party booking sites. So what I would be trying to do is think, can I give people a coupon code on the site? Is that going to be possible? Um, and really going back to that strategy of, um, free add-ons it works so well for restaurants so you're going to give people a free starter a free appetizer if they go and buy a main course um, they're going to get a free drink if they buy a meal um, anything like that there's a very high markup on food and drink in restaurants so giving away free accessories works a lot better and it's more profitable than giving somebody ten dollars or something like that but yeah in terms of content calendar there's always something we can be theming you know Chinese New Year, right, we've got a special Chinese buffet night. Um, there's going to be loads of things, right, it's coming to summer, we've got a new lighter sort of picnic themed menu. There's going to be a lot of thing, things that you can find there. So it's one of the, actually one of the easiest industries to be doing retargeting for. All right, now for lower price physical items, does it make sense to pitch, uh, to pitch a lead magnet or is offering a discount or free item in exchange for email sufficient? Um, yeah, I would go for uh, the coupon code um, or, or the free add-ons there, definitely, to, to use, basically use that as a lead magnet. Um, so, yeah, with lead magnets, there's kind of three things we can do. So, like we've, we've discussed, get some of these add-ons and discounts. I would, I would just try and use that with a pop-up on the website. Second is we can be using our traditional lead magnet of a PDF download. I don't think we really need to go down that route, really, for low-end e-commerce. The other thing is competitions. Um, 
so strategy I run every week for some clients. It's so useful. Um, free giveaways, just low value giveaways on the on the Facebook page. Um, again, that's something where we can dive into strategy in a whole webinar. But um, be be aware of the Facebook rules is that you can't ask people to tag and get them to share. Some of them, if they want to do that, is fine, but you can't ask for it. Otherwise, it's against Facebook rules. But you could get people to um, like the post on a Facebook page you boost that post and then you can create an engagement audience of people that have engaged with your Facebook page and then we could retarget them um, and then try and get the sale off them there. Um, so yeah, keep it quite simple for low end e-commerce. All right, Troy asked who provided the case study he wanted to read about, I assume the most recent um, one that you spoke about. Yeah, so the case study, we had a couple there. So um, the one for the free add-ons, that was from Scott Fleer. He's from Rugby Warfare. Um, so yeah, I think it's rugbywarfare.com, something like that. If you just Google it, you can certainly find him. Really, really great guy, really nice websites and products as well there. Um, we did one for the sequencing from a company called Globin, um, globein.com. They are US retailer only there. Um, so yeah, have a look for those. Also, if you go into adespresso.com and you just click on our blog tab on there, if you type into the search box case studies or just case study, um, we've got loads of case studies on there of clients that we've worked with. We are going to put it into a dedicated portal soon to make it easier to find. Um, but yeah, we've got a lot of ad espresso clients doing really well after they've had campaign reviews or coaching or some of the clients that we actually run their campaigns for them. Um, we've really built out their businesses so you can find some extra case studies there. Um, but Rugby Warfare and Globin were the two that we've covered in this particular webinar. All right, looks like our last question here is from Rich. Why would estimated results for a Facebook page changed based on the credit card I use? I noticed this today. <laughs> um, probably not something uh, I can really give that much insight on there, but I guess what we've got to remember is there is a bit of a guesswork and it's sometimes it's based on, on, on that previous data. So maybe when you updated your credit card, Facebook has just that, might be a coincidence that they've updated their data there. Um, so yeah, estimated results, take them with a pinch of salt. They they seem to be all over the place. Um, one thing that's always useful is just looking at your current CPA. And you know, if you're finding that it's consistent, like say it's $10 CPA, then if you're spending $100 a day, you're gonna expect 10 conversions there. Also look at your CPM. Um, and you know, excuse the sales pitch, but something that's really nice in uh, Ad Espresso is that you are getting a nice graphical dashboard. The problem I always find in Business Manager is it's like this giant Excel spreadsheet, and I just can't really work out what my average CPA is across the month or what my CPMs are that easily. Um, I can do all these different breakdowns, but sometimes having a nice graph works well. So just looking at some of your key trends like cost per click, cost per acquisition, you know, cost per thousand impressions, you can then work out your own estimated results. But yeah, I don't know exactly what's happening in your case, but sometimes I do try and get estimates and they just don't have them available because there's not enough data. So they must be updating it quite often based on recent data. Right, so I guess we've got to the end of the questions, Tori. Yes, I do not see any more unless anyone wants to chime in with the last couple of questions they might have. Brilliant, that's fine. So if anybody's got any questions afterwards, they're always welcome to um, join in. I'll just go back one slide here um, that they can go back to um, just Twitter here um, at Adespresso um, or they can email in info at adespresso.com or connect on our Facebook page or anything like that. We'll be happy to answer any questions you've got later on. Also, if you're an Adespresso customer taking out our trial, then um, definitely join our private Facebook group, Ad Espresso University Facebook group. And we've got some really active discussions in there. So we'd be happy to, you know, just go and elaborate on any personalized strategies for you. Um, so yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. Really appreciate you joining us today. And yeah, I'd just like to wish you um, really good luck with your next campaigns.